Hey guys, so today we're going to be semi-permanently installing Starlink onto our RV roof. So here we've got the dish itself, the stand, the router, the router power cord, and the cable that connects the dish to the router. I will also be installing the ethernet adapter that I had to purchase separately from Starlink. This is used so we can run ethernet from our router to our Peplink Petpoint device, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Now, when I say semi-permanently installed, this dish itself is not actually going to stay on the RV during movement. It's not designed to do that. While Starlink has unlocked the portability feature of the service for the low price of $25 a month, the dish itself is not actually designed to be used while in motion. This type of internet service while in motion is actually highly regulated and Starlink does not have the proper approvals quite yet. According to Starlink's terms of service, you can actually have your account deactivated or terminated if you use the Starlink service currently while in motion. I am going to be installing the pole mount on a pole. I'm going to be running the cabling through the roof and I'm going to be installing the router. So for the time being, I'm actually gonna be pulling the dish into our RV when we start to move. And then when we arrive on location, I'm gonna be reinstalling it in the mount. To be honest, it takes like 30 seconds, so it's not that big a deal. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna be running the cabling through our roof back to the back of our RV where I'm gonna be mounting the Starlink system. So you may actually remember from a previous video where I ran the antennas up through a big junction box on our roof. Remember I told you I'm buying this big junction box for future proofing? So the reason I decided to mount the junction box to the roof and then mount the antenna on top of the junction box is future proofing. Um, I have an extra junction box up here in case I need to run any wiring for anything else that may come in the future. This is exactly what I meant by future proofing. All right, so I'm gonna run the Starlink cable up through the hole that I previously made. I'm then going to run it through that hole into our bathroom. All right, so now I've run the cabling back up into our bathroom. I'm gonna run it through that track that I previously installed and up through where that light is. Now I've got it routed through there and time to get on the roof and open that up so I can route it up to our roof. Got it all buttoned up, and unfortunately I cracked the track right there, so I'm gonna have to probably replace that with some more track, but overall not too bad. Now I'm gonna take this drill bit and drill a hole inside of the junction box and then run the cable through this gland on the outside of the junction box. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap all this extra cord and stuff it in the junction box so it's not just hanging all over the roof. Now that it's all wrapped up in there nice and tight, we can button up the junction box. I've got the cabling run all the way to the back of the RV here and I'm going to go ahead and mount 
our serving system right here. All right, so now we're gonna do the fun part. We're going to install our pole mount in our flagpole holder and tighten this little screw down nice and snug. Then all that's left is mounting our Starlink. And it would help if I actually plugged it in. One more very important piece of this install is this dry box. What this does is this keeps the cable that would normally connect to the dish secure and dry while the dish is not actually connected. Man, I'll tell you what, I sure am ready to go inside to finish the rest of this install. It's not summer yet in Georgia, but it feels every bit of it. Let's go get this router installed. All right, to round out this installation, I'm going to take the cable that's run up to the roof and plug it into my Starlink Ethernet adapter. Then I'm going to plug it into the bottom of the Starlink router. And I'm going to take my power cord, plug it into the Starlink router as well. Then all I have to do is run an ethernet cord from my pep wave to the bottom of my Starlink ethernet adapter. This video is mostly about how I installed the hardware on our RV. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how I connected our Starlink router to our pep wave and how I'm actually taking internet that came in through the Starlink dish and sort of pumping it out through the pep wave. That way we don't actually have to switch all of our devices Wi-Fi over from the pep wave when we're using mobile data over to the Starlink router when we're wanting to use Starlink. It kind of just happens on its own. But I'll get into that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.